Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome world number one, Scotty Scheffler, to the media interview room. Scotty, thanks for joining us. You've been incredibly consistent this year, particularly in the majors. With this being the last one of the year, how much more does that motivate you? I'm not really sure. I think, um, you know, I always get excited for the majors. They're favorite tournaments to play, best fields, um, usually the best golf courses. And so um, I wouldn't say any one of them is more important than the other, but definitely excited to be here. I um, mean, excited to see what this course is like in tournament conditions. Great. We'll have a question from the front, please. Uh, Scotty, on the uh, talking points of your consistency, which a lot of people are talking about, is, can you identify a way coming into this season that Rory and Rom's success helped you to sort of elevate your game or inspired you to elevate your game to such a consistent level? Um, I'm not really sure. I think I'm always, you know, striving to get a little bit better at a time, and um, I'm, any competition is, is healthy for sure. And um, yeah, I would say that just you know keep trying to get a little bit better, and it's nice when you get to actually see the results because a lot of times in this game you put in the work and. The results are never really that immediate, um, and so it's nice to be able to look back at the last year or two and and see some good results. Specifically, how did you get better? I just keep trying to get a little bit better at a time. I don't focus um, too much energy on one area of the game. I try and keep things pretty even across the board, always working on the short game putting and hitting the ball. and. Um, I don't try to overthink things. I try to keep things as simple as possible. And right now that recipe's been working quite well and um, just trying to do more of it. Just try and hit a little bit better, chip a little bit better, pot a little bit better. And um, hopefully the results are continue to improve. Doug, please. On a satisfaction level, are you, are you good with what you've got? And you hear the word consistency all the time with you anymore. Or would you rather have uh, more wins and, and a bunch of other miscuts? Satisfaction level. Satisfaction level difference between the two? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have no idea. Um, it's really fun winning. It's not as fun finishing third. And so, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I mean, it's great to have good results. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of how I've uh, competed all year and continue to put myself in position. And um, looking back on the year, I feel like I've just been on the outside looking in a few tournaments going into, going into Sundays. And um, I don't think I've had very many 54 hole leads. And so, um, I mean, you might remember better than I will, but yeah. I don't, you should remember. Not I, I should, but I don't. Um. <laughs> and then uh, secondly, as it relates, I guess, to Lynx Golf, how, many, how often do you hit shots that you've never practiced? I'd say a decent amount this week, especially around the greens. I wouldn't say at home that I chip very much with a pitching wedge or nine iron just because when you're in the States, you're – much more dictated by the lie and the grain that you see around golf courses, especially where I live in Texas. You're very dictated by the grain in the Bermuda. And then as you go up north, you're very dictated by what the lie tells you you can do with the ball. And over here, um, every lie is pretty scratchy, and um, you just have a lot of options. And so like today, I chipped a lot with my pitching wedge and nine iron, and that's something that I'm just not able to practice. But it, it feels pretty natural. Evan, please. Scotty, uh, 15 top 10s out of 19 events this season already. Do you feel like you're flying under the radar coming into this week? I'm not really sure where the radar is. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I do my best to not try and pay attention to things. I, I don't know if I'm under, above, on anybody's radar. I don't, I don't really try to pay attention to that stuff. I try to prepare for each event the same way. And um, Outside of last week, I think that was really the only tournament where my preparation was a little bit different, whereas I – just tried to get as much rest as possible um, after, what was it, Travelers? I think I'd played six out of seven, with two of them being majors and being in contention in both of those majors. And by the time I got home, I was pretty wiped. And so um, I only hit balls a few times and played golf once in the, that off week, or those two off weeks. Um, got to spend some time with family and friends at home. And it was, it was good. Definitely didn't practice as much as I typically would in my off weeks, um, but it was refreshing and um, it was a good reset going into the rest of the year. Your biggest win last year was obviously the Masters. Biggest this year was the players. What's the satisfaction level this year compared to last year so far? Um, do you ask him to compare the two years? or Yeah, like, like are you equally as satisfied this season as last season or do you need a victory this week to almost follow it up? I would say that I'm probably more satisfied with last year, but 
I wasn't even close to becoming satisfied with last year's uh, season. So golf's one of those games where um, I don't think you ever really achieved that satisfaction. I think you're always asking for more. I think if you asked me when I was in college if I could be 27 and have, I think, six wins, a major, and a players, I'd, I'd probably say, yeah, I'm satisfied. But then you get on the other side and you win one tournament, you want to win two, and then two turns into three, and um, it's just never enough. Bob, please. Scotty, was, what was the first, uh, your first experience with Lynx golf prior to playing in an open? And do you recall liking it? Did, did it take some getting used to? Or, and, and how do you f feel that's evolved? So first Lynx experience would be the Scottish Open, 2021, maybe? Um, I think my first open was at St. George's in 20. Yeah, so 21 would have been, this, it would have been the Scottish Open. Um, and I, I really like it. it. It seemed like a natural progression. Like I said, out here you can be extremely creative. Um, basically around this golf course, if you just avoid the bunkers, you can kind of do whatever you want. But anytime you're in a bunker, it's, I mean, it's pretty much a stroke penalty the way the bunkers are shaped this week. Um, and in terms of Lynx golf, I, I just think it's really enjoyable. I feel like we, I play Renaissance each year and it's very fun. And then we get to the open and um, I start getting really used to Lynx golf and I just want to play a lot more of it. And I get a little sad that I got to be done with it until next July. Um, Number one, please. Hi there, Scotty. What have you made about one or two of the kind of specific facets of this course, maybe particularly the new 17th? I mean, the one thing I've noticed about this golf course is anytime I'm hitting it, anytime my ball is going towards a bunker, I'm very nervous. <laughs> I, I'm just going to try and avoid the bunkers at all costs. I feel like at St. George's, a lot of the bunkers at least had a tiny bit of an upslope before you got to the, the wall face. And here, it seems like the faces of every bunker, it's almost a downslope going towards it. Um, I don't think that's something that I particularly like in a golf course. I think um, it doesn't reward the good shots as much. If you're closer to the green, you end up closer to the lip. And if you had a worse shot and barely get into the bunker, you actually have a play. Um, so I'd prefer if there was a little bit of slope there. but. That's what's so special about the majors. Every golf course is different, and it's a challenge, and I'm just going to do my best to stay out of them this week. And 17, obviously, it's a short par three, isn't it? But crikey, is it a test? Yeah, that's another one of those holes. I was, I was talking to a few of the guys earlier today. There's not really a, a high percentage play. You just have to hit a really good shot, and if you don't, I mean, I would say missing left of the green is a little bit better than right. That bunker is pretty treacherous on the right, but as far as that hole goes, I'm just going to try and hit a really good shot, and that's – Pretty much all you can do. Thank you. Number three to the left here, please. Uh, hi, Scotty. You, you, you can get some pretty filthy weather conditions in the open. Um, uh, how, how do you cope with that? Are you, are you comfortable with that? Or Yeah, I grew up where I grew up in Texas, we play in the worst of the heat, and it seems like the worst of the cold. And so I'm, I'm pretty used to all the different conditions. And I always like going out and playing golf whenever I could. And so I, I play golf in all kinds of weather at home, even, even now. Um, you know, a little cold weather never really scared me away from going and having a game. Um, and it's just part of it. I think it's fun. I also think the Scottish prepares you really well each year for the weather we see here because it seems worse up there than it, than it does down here. I mean, last week we had rain, wind. The last day it was blowing 40. And so it's really good preparation, just getting used to the elements. And just one other thing. Is there anything you particularly enjoyed about being in the UK last couple of weeks off the course? I haven't really done much off the course. Um, we, my wife and I like coming to Europe each year because we usually try and stay for a few days and go on vacation, and that's always fun. And I mean, one year we went to London, and it was fantastic just getting to walk around, see the city, and um, enjoy some good food. It was a lot of fun. Four, please. Scotty, when you get to your status and number one in the world, the major champion, you get asked questions about the state of the game and, and the divide and all the stuff that's going on. Rory has been in that position for a long time. I wonder how you think he's handled it. I think he's done a good job. Um, I, think, I think you have certain guys that like to be in that position and other guys that like to avoid that kind of stuff. And you know, I'm glad that Rory seemed to be one of those guys that enjoyed it and put himself right in kind of the forefront of it. Um, I wouldn't say that's necessarily my style. Um, yes, it matters to me, but I also like coming out here and competing. and. Um, that's that's my main focus typically, and not that focusing on the mergers is a bad thing. We need people to to be there, and um, you know Rory's done a great job as kind of one of the leaders for our tour. But there's also a, a number of other players that have stepped up as well, and um, you know we're all trying to do our best to help improve the tour. It's just some people I would say would do more of it 
sitting here versus behind the scenes, and that's just how people want to go about their business. Doug, please. Along those lines, Scotty, do you, um, do you have in your, in your head a solution for how this should work out, and do you want to be a part of the solution? I would like to be a part of the solution, but I, I don't know what that solution is. Joy, please. Scotty, uh, this year has been difficult uh, regarding the question that I'm asking. Uh, 12 elevated events, the Ryder Cup year. Uh, as being a world number one, do you think that there's a responsibility that you have to play in other parts of the world, which you have not been able to do as yet? Uh, would you like to play in a place like, say, Dubai, where I come from? Yeah, I'd like to see more of the world playing golf. I feel like the position where I am in my life, that's more likely than um, when you start a family and stuff like that. And um, it's a little bit easier for me to leave and travel now because my wife comes with me. But when, uh, when, uh, when that changes, things will look a little, little bit differently. But yeah, I'd like to go play in different parts of the world. But I only have so many events that I can play throughout the year. There's still other things I like to do outside of golf. And um, a lot of that is spending time at home with our friends and our family. And um, so yes, I do. I I would like to play in other parts of the world. It's just you know, there's only so many days in a year. You know, will it be a little easier next year when there are eight elevated events and designated events and no Ryder Cup? I'm not sure. I haven't really looked towards next year to be completely honest with you. I've been pretty focused on on this year. I do. I mean, next year will be a Presidents Cup year. I, I don't know exactly where that'll be. Um, I've, I've considered coming over and playing more events in Europe in the fall, and now that we actually have an, um, more time off in the fall on our tour schedule, that's really the time of year where you can kind of make those things happen. But that time of year, it's also football season at home, and that's it's a fun time to be at home. Four to the left, please. Scotty, hi. Robin Barwick from Kingdom Magazine. I don't know if this is old news, but do you still have the old station wagon at home um, or have you replaced it? And if you are still driving it, can you tell us a little bit about how long you've had the car, how many miles it's done, what the story is with that? So I do still have the car. I don't, I don't drive it as much. Um, I recently got a different car. Um, it still sits in front of the house, though. Um, it's a 2012 Yukon XL. My dad bought it. There was, we went to the Masters in 2012. I went with, oddly enough, there was a kid on my high school golf team who got tickets for all of us, and my dad went with my sisters, and he drove his Yukon there to Augusta, and something happened with the engine where the car was basically told, and he's like, I can either pay you know, 10 grand or something like that to fix the engine, or I can just buy another car here. And um, his car was old at the time, and so he bought another car there, and it was the one that I have now, and so it's got a Masters GMC logo on the back of it. And... Uh, yeah, when I went to college, I think I had like an old Honda Accord and um, I liked his car more than mine. And so I think I finally wiggled my way into, into taking his car and then I think he got some other Honda, something like that. And um, I put a new transmission in it right when I turned pro. And I drove it for a few years and it treated me nice and it's still out in front of the house. And you know, I, I definitely, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it back to my dad, but uh, yeah, he's definitely not going to get rid of it or anything like that. It'll probably be his ranch car. Do you know how many, how many miles it's done, and do you know what your longest road trip would have been in it? So I didn't do any damage to this car. My dad did all the damage in a short period of time. We used to, I mean, he would drive everywhere. I mean, he drove us to, I remember once when I was a kid, not in that car specifically, but he drove us to San Diego from Dallas, which, if you don't know, is about a 22-hour drive, and he did that with four kids. I mean, probably under the age of 12 at the time. I think I was 10, so my sister was 12. So 22 hours in the car, that's a pretty long time. But when I'm home, I go to the golf course, to the gym, and a restaurant that's usually within five, 10 minutes of my house. So I don't really get to put any miles on the car. It's, oh, most of the credit to that goes to my dad. Microphone three, please. Hi, Scotty. You won, you won a major last year. You're the current world number one. How would you view a year without a major, without winning a major? A year without winning a major would be pretty similar to the other 25 years of my life, I guess. <laughs> no, I think that I like to focus more on the way I approach things and my attitude than I would um, the actual results. Yes, it's so fun to win majors, but I'm not going to sit at the end of the year and look back on the year and be frustrated or upset because I didn't win a major. Um, I 
step up on the tee at every tee, at every tournament hoping to win and anytime I don't win I'm usually pretty frustrated and that's kind of the nature of the game is at the end of every year you're usually fairly frustrated because you just can't win that much I mean Tiger didn't even win that much he lost a lot more than he won um, it's not like other sports and as long as I show up with a good attitude and, and play with a good attitude, that's most of what I try to focus on. And um, at times I'm really good at that, and at times I struggle with that. But that's what I focus on. In the back here, please. Hi, Scotty. Uh, a lot's been made about your consistency. A lot's also been made about your putting. Uh, do you see it as the same problem as the media sees it? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that... Most of what has to happen is something has to be created into a story. And for a while, it didn't really seem like there was much of a story behind the way that I play golf. You know, I think I was viewed as probably a touch boring and didn't really show much emotion and, I don't know, whatever else you could think of. I don't know. But I think I had back-to-back -back tournaments that I could have won where I putted poorly. And all of a sudden, it became this thing where, like, I'll watch highlights of my round and like even the announcers anytime you step over a putt it's like well this is the part of the game he struggles with and it's like if you say it every time and you guys see me miss a 12 footer it's like oh there it is he's struggling again and it's it's one of those deals where I don't pay attention to it the things that I'm working on right now I feel very excited about um, I'm hitting a lot of good putts and pretty soon a lot of those good putts will start falling in the middle of the hole instead of dodging around the, the side of it and I have a lot of faith in what I'm working on right now, and um, I'm hoping to see some results soon. Do we have any final questions for Scotty? What kind of car did you get yourself? I did not purchase a car myself, so I guess I'll have to skirt that. But it's a it's a Cadillac, and it's it's awesome. It's a sponsored thing. Right, our final question from out the back there. Thank you. Um, it's just a quick one. You mentioned Tiger a minute ago there. I wondered if you could share any memories of him winning here in 06, whether that was watching it as a kid at the time or in the time since. I don't really remember watching it. I, I, a lot of my Tiger memories are all on YouTube. Um, I really do get a lot of value out of watching that kind of stuff. And um, I did watch the, his, his win here on YouTube. And um, it's a pretty valuable tool, really. You get to watch so much cool stuff. And um, yeah, I'd say most of my young memories of Tiger, just watching him win a lot and seeing him make all the putts, whether it was here at the Open or, you know, the putt at Tour, he always stands out. And, um, I mean, what I appreciate about Tiger is I feel like a lot of times when you ask him questions, he's very eager to help. Um, besides the divot video that everybody saw this year, he tried to keep that one a secret from me. Still got to get the, get the answer on that one. But, um, you know, he's in a different position in the game now than where he was as more of a spokesperson. And I'm... We hope that he can come out and play more, but I mean, we're very appreciative of all the years that we had with him watching him play and the few years that I got being able to compete against him. And we'll sneak one last one from Matt, please. Yeah, just to follow up on what you just said about uh, YouTube being a valuable tool, does that mean that you, you watch Tiger's performance here to get some insight into playing Hoylake? Yeah, just to see the course. I, I'd never seen this course before. I didn't really know anything about it other than the fact that it was really firm then and he didn't hit or only hit one driver for the entire week. So anytime I'm coming to a new course, I try to learn something about it before I get there versus just coming in blind. And I mean, it really is a valuable tool for me. Have you ever played courses on like uh, PlayStation or anything to do that? No, I was never into video games. If I, if I played golf courses on video games, it'd probably kill my confidence. Well, Scotty, thank you very much for your time today. We'll wish you the best of luck this week. Thanks, y'all.